Attempts to influence Parliament for the Indian cause have failed. You must do more. I will not jeopardize my relationship with Queen and country to satisfy your crusade. Your Highness, you belong to India, not here acting the part of a noble foreigner. I have wasted enough time indulging in this. If your mother could see you now, the last Maharaja of Punjab, basking inside his golden cage. How dare you! I always recommend bringing someone's mother into the argument. If he doesn't help his people, he will regret it forever. How may we help? Will you talk to him? He won't listen to me. We'll do our best. I suppose Mr. Green sent you. Bringing up your mother was... Impolite, and he was wrong to do so. We'd like to rectify the situation. Then humor me, and join me in a shooting game. None of these people have any sense of enjoyment, and I am bored to death. A shooting game? Seeing you haven't changed at all. Ellsworth? My word! <laughs> How good it is to see you! The mother country has treated you well. <laughs> uh, Jacob and Evie Fry, this is Brinley Ellsworth, a friend from a past life. You've made new friends, I see. What brings you to this part of the Empire? Ah, uh, company business, unfortunately. But I could not resist the chance of seeing you again. It's been far too long. 
I've heard nobody throws a party better than my dearest friend. <laughs> I'm eager to see if your reputation overseas holds any truth. My servant Thomas will be scoring the game. <clears throat> Acquire the most amount of points by shooting the bottles in front of you. Each bottle is worth one point. You have 30 seconds. May the best shot win. Start the timer. Come, Thomas. This isn't enough of a challenge. Let's shorten the timer. Round two will now commence. Try and do as well, if not better, within a 20-second time limit. Timer at the ready. Begin! <laughs> I do believe you are equally matched with this one, Singh. Your turn, Your Highness. Come, let us see if you are better with a gun than you were with a slingshot. <laughs> Allow me. Impressive. I am in awe, Singh. What they say of you is true. What on earth? Sir, I believe I heard a second shot. He's right. That sounded like a second gunshot. Strange. Strange indeed. Let me investigate. I'm sure it wasn't anything serious. Don't bother. <laughs> A second shot? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. There was no one else <laughs> who would shoot a gun at a party. Are you suggesting this is a serious matter? It was most likely just an echo. Leave it be now. I've been doing this a long time. I know the difference between one shot and two. There were most definitely two shots. What are you on about? Guns are prohibited in the gardens. <laughs> I saw the man in front of me with a gun. I just assumed it was part of the decor. You know how royalty likes to socialize. <laughs> that prince is causing problems. He deserves to be silenced. Kill him! I'll gut you like a fish! You too will be silenced! <laughs>
should have spent a bullet on you too. Maybe he's got some information in his pockets. Just let me live. Just let me go. Well, well, well. Seems our old friends, the Templars, are involved. Ah, oh, Jacob. I trust you're enjoying yourself? The second shot... I told you, I won't hear any more of it today. I must go back to my party. You must fill me in on your life here. It's been far too long. Apologies, Your Highness. And if you won't listen, perhaps Greeny will. Any progress? We're not the only ones who want His Highness's attention. Don't tell me the British Indies Company is harassing him again. They can't afford it. Well, let's just say it's not just the BIC. And Singh doesn't want any part of it. The Templars? It can't be. At this rate, they'll have him before he can do any good. We have to convince him to trust us. Meet me back at my old shop. I might know something that can help. Good. You're both here. I have something to give you. That really isn't necessary. More gifts? You spoil me, Greeny. Templar numbers are dwindling, and I hate to admit it, but the rooks are thriving. Did you hear that, Evie? Thriving. Your time in London has been well spent. I am proud of you.
Freddy, I hardly recognized you in your police togs. You certainly scrub up well. I thank you for your help in collecting these bounties. I am impressed with all you have accomplished. And uh, I wish you luck with your future endeavors. Good, you're here. <gasps> this isn't the first time His Highness has had Steady troubles on. with the British Indies Company. A yeah. couple of years ago, they held his yeah. mother captive and brought all his letters to her. Odds are they're keeping his correspondence from reaching the outside world once again. I have acquired a mail carrier schedule. There are two separate routes of transport. The first, a mail carrying carriage convoy. The second, a train. If we set up an ambush, you should be able to seize the letters. Maybe this will change his mind. Start with the convoy. We must block the road. That's the way. We've got dynamite planted near the convoy's ambush location. Today's your lucky day. No one will find your body. 
stay clear of. <laughs> I want to take you home and feed you to me dogs. Got them. Repeat the same process with the tree. I must return to my shop and shall invite Mr. Singh over for a spot of tea. are on that train. 
train's Understood. coming. Got it. Will do. Why'd we stop? The boss will be angry if we don't deliver these on time. Mm. Here we are. Now back to Greeny. There is a difference between pacifism and inaction. How many times do I have to tell you? Ah, you two do have impeccable timing. Did we interrupt something? I believe these will be of interest to you, Your Highness. These letters, they are from me. The seals have been broken. That's how we found them. This, this is a letter I wrote to my mother when I was just a boy. Where did you find these possessions of mine? On a mail convoy. The Templars. They have a way of getting to you. I thought I had put an end to it years ago. But the British Indies Company continues to steal my property. You were right to think something strange was afoot. We must take action. But it will not be possible without your help. I believe you're right. But I must have some time to think on this. In the meantime, please be discreet. I don't need Her Majesty finding out about this. You have a pleasant day now. Good to see you again. The pleasure is mine. Shall we? It has come to my attention that the British Indies Company has stolen a large sum of wealth from the good people of Punjab. It is my intention to send it back. And where is this gold located? All I've managed to find out is that the BIC have their very own accountant. 
Perhaps he will have more information about this. Good plan. Apparently, he likes to frequent a certain pub. The accountant should be here somewhere. Apologies, but I don't hang around with that sort. Oh, you just missed him. He headed to the bank with a couple of men I'd never seen before. Which is odd, because the bank isn't even open now that I think of it. He's right. We should go to the bank. What are those brigands up to now? That's it. Bartender was right. Easy now. It's closed. We have to find another way in. I will secure a safe route before following you inside. Get in first. I'll join you later. The accountant should be nearby. Perhaps I should check the vaults. Oh. Ah. Wind 
I'm on the right path. He's around here somewhere. in time you think you can just go shooting your mouth off at any opportunity do you have any idea who you're working for the BIC accounts are confidential I'm sorry I'm sorry just let me go and I'll be quiet I promise you not a chance we'll take them out together but we've got to do so quietly you take one I'll take the other ready I am indebted to you. The British Indies thugs have somewhat worked him over. We need to get him to safety. There's someone intruding on our affairs. Find them and kill them. We must bring the accountant with us. <sighs> we'll die if we leave him here. Let's get out of here. to repay you. We need to know what the British Indies Company wants with the stolen Punjabi gold. That I do not know. What I can tell you is that they've taken it to a warehouse in Southwark. Whatever they want with it, it can't be good. You don't hold people hostage when there's good news on the line.
quick, put him in the back. I will take him to the hospital. We shall reconvene later. Thank you, Miss Fry. This is one that's most promising. An important detective is missing. Skullduggery is surely afoot. Solve it, and I'll write it up quick as you please. What do I know what's taking you to medical college yet? He's a friend of mine. The whole station is out looking for him as we speak. Ironically, he came here on an investigation himself. Seems several people have gone missing in this part of town. We've had reports of missing people over the last few months. Detective Murphy is just the most recent and the only one who's anybody to speak of. Well now, I didn't ask about this. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. An odd man indeed. He spent a fair amount of time in here uh, poking around. Some people around town just seem to vanish. It is mysterious. 
George delivers that to us. It's amazing. The flowers just grow and grow. Sweet boy. Constantly giving my assistant gifts, a jacket, a handbag, and so on. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my Aww. way to work. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. George is my sweetheart. I think he plans to propose marriage soon. Maybe oh. even today. Good old Detective Murphy. Must be about someplace. He's probably got Pie Eye to run off somewhere. That's unusual. about missing people, but a meat pa he did. Stayed and chatted for a few minutes, then headed off to the barber. I'm told that some people have gone missing, but I don't know anything about it. <coughs> George delivers meat for my pies. Lovely lad. I pay on delivery. I believe he picks it up from a local butcher shop. You mean the annoying bloke nosing oh. around? I told him to sod off. Uh -uh. I pride myself on the quality of the beef I sell. Somebody selling cheap around here, though, my sales have dropped off. George? I don't know any George. <laughs> came in asking lots of questions. I believe I answered them to his satisfaction. I suppose there are a few people I haven't seen in a while. Why would you want to know about him? Oh. Stupid boy. He does deliver tan leather on occasion, but I really have very little to do with him. I should go back and ask about this. Yeah, I gave him a trim. He asked no ended questions. When I cut his hair, I notices a tattoo right at the base of his neck. A green Celtic cross, it was. I'm trying to quit drinking. Sometimes my hand shakes when I'm given a shave. 
George was in here earlier, getting an haircut. He wanted to look nice for his girl. He's been seeing Joanna from the flower shop for some time now. Said he's finally saved up enough money to pop a question. You're right. Several people have disappeared over the past months. Some of them were customers of mine. Exactly oh. what I'm talking about. Oh. It's Jiffy. Get out of here before I front you. Please. It, get don't Jiffy. Hurt me. You can skip. Ah. I just want to go home. Something don't feel right about this. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. I saw him going into the barber shop when I was on my way to work. In this kind of neighborhood, people come and go. George, I hoped he'd stop by. I want to see his new haircut. He must be at his house. Oh, I do hope he proposes soon. I'm just a flower girl. I wouldn't harm anyone. Besides, George has disappeared and I'm worried sick. coming too close to figuring out where all those people went. <laughs> they could pass it out to the baker, the florist, and me. You very cleverly puzzled that one out. A very unpleasant crime. Perfect for one of Mr. Raymond's penny dreadfuls. <laughs> 